us today at the Barra Center. My name is Ravi Shankar and it's my pleasure to welcome our guest, Professor Susanna Nunes from Kaust University in Saudi Arabia, who is visiting the Barra Center this week and has very kindly agreed to give us this interview. So thank you, Professor Nunes. It's a pleasure. Um, so a bit of background about our guest before we begin our interview. So Professor Nunes completed her undergraduate studies as well as her PhD at the University of Campinas in her native Brazil, after which she, um, she attained the Alexander von Humboldt Professorship in Germany where she worked for several years prior to taking up her current position as the Associate Dean and Professor for Environmental Science and Engineering at KAUST in Saudi Arabia. Her research interests span a whole array of topics within the field of membrane separation processes and material science, including but not restricted to the synthesis of new polymeric materials and nanocomposites for nanofiltration and membrane distillation. As well as being an acclaimed name in her field, she also serves as one of the key advisory board members for the Barra Center, whose role is to uh, promote the research strategy and leadership of the research center. So with that, it's our pleasure to welcome Professor Nunes to the Barra Center. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So you're here at the Barra Center this week to deliver your seminar on your recent work on polymeric materials for membrane applications. Would you mind discussing with us in a bit more detail about your current research interests and what your group are working on? Yeah, I work mainly with uh, polymeric membranes. So we develop from new polymers, we functionalize polymers, commercial polymers, we transform them into membranes and uh, uh, test different applications. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I think the main topics that we cover is uh, from morphology control, very strict morphology control by using, for instance, block of polymers. Mm -hmm. um, then we control self-assembly solution. We understand thermodynamics. So we characterize uh, the different methods of, uh, of uh, microscopy, uh, on electronic microscopy, 3D reconstruction. And then the second topic is uh, preparation of membranes from methods which are using solvents which are less toxic mm -hmm. or are um, really try not to use solvent at all. For sure. and, uh, and finally is a, a topic which uh, we are initiating a project with, uh, with the Barra Center is mm -hmm. on, on organic resistant uh, nanofiltration membranes mm -hmm. and uh, also um, using materials which are not only solvent resistant but at, uh, resistant at high temperature but our polymeric base. And we work also with water, which is, uh, uh, mm. is a force topic. Mm, definitely. So as you mentioned, water is one of the topics that's gaining a lot of interest nowadays mm. with water purification. Different technologies are being mm. applied for this. So in recent years, polymeric membranes or even ceramic membranes have really shown great performance, both on a research level mm. and also in industry. But now there are also other materials that are coming to the forefront, for example, metal organic frameworks or boron nitride, other nanopores materials. What do you feel are the key advantages to the materials that you work with for mm -hmm. such applications? So you mean for water? Yes. Yeah. I think water is, is one application that membranes have been uh, active and well successful for decades. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very difficult for us to compete as a developing new materials with those we are optimizing in the industry, which mm -hmm. are multi-layer membranes with interfacial polymerization or some which are so loss acetate is still the basic ones. They, they work so well that it's difficult to compete with them. Yes. Um, of course, I think he, for for large scale with the desalination, so I think it will stay for a while like that because mm -hmm. uh, um, they will, in large scale, probably not change. They sure. will be not willing to take the risk. Mm -hmm. uh, you will find advantages in, in MOF or some artificial uh, water channels and so much. Mm -hmm. You could be more, uh, even more selective, maybe. Although uh, mm. the commercial membranes are really selectivity for salts, which are 19 above 99 percent. Sure. But you, uh, if you work with different uh, materials, so you might be able to separate not only uh, salt for mm -hmm. uh, for seawater, mm -hmm. but you want, might be able to separate different salts, for instance, or different or. Uh, Contamination, pollutants, mm. which are hard to hard to separate with the uh, current membranes, like uh, neutral uh, small molecules, which are, are uh, just going through the, the regular membranes. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be, I think, uh, more a niche application, or not only niche in terms of small market, but uh, 
more specific separations, I think, is where uh, when you develop new materials for membrane, you should. Uh, I see. So, so you mentioned that there's a lot of membranes now that are already commercial, and it's difficult to compete with them because they've been proven at quite a large scale. But that said, do you see that if there's any technical challenges or limitations that still need to be overcome within the field? Yeah. So for desalination, really there are uh, maybe two kinds of membranes. Well, one is a interfacial polymerization uh, membranes, which are, and the, the other one is still the very classical cellulose acetate membrane with the okay. pores. Uh, you have one issue which is still hard to, to deal with is, is falling. So if you mm. work in, in, in the water desalination, or so you have a, uh, different kinds of falling that will mm. um, make the operation go down. So I think this is the main um, problem. And you have, when you clean, um, when you promote the desalination, you have to clean these membranes also because of falling or because of other issues. Mm. And these membranes are not necessarily uh, stable in, in like in chlorine solutions mm. uh, because um, some chemicals which are used to clean the membranes. Mm. So then to have more stable ones, so it's, it's another issue which uh, I should be addressed. I see. That's very interesting. So definitely still some challenges to yeah, yeah, deal yeah. with in the industry. Mm. So dealing with such challenges often requires combination of different expertise, be it material synthesis, characterization, mm -hmm. testing. And that's kind of what the Barra Center tries to echo, that sentiment of yeah. bringing together different research groups, working towards similar goals and separation processes mm -hmm. and materials engineering. What do you feel are the key benefits of that kind of collaboration? As I'm sure, as you mentioned in your talk this morning, that that's something that Kaust also yeah, deals with quite a lot. Having interdisciplinarity is essential for any anything yeah. that you're doing today, especially in this field, for, yeah, you need people to develop new materials, uh, uh, different kinds, each uh, class of materials uh, could justify a, a, a research group in sure. itself. Mm -hmm. oh. So then if you join people with a strong expertise in, in the different fields, mm -hmm. it's the be best way to achieve a, a goal. So you have, you need someone who understand more on the membrane itself or how, mm -hmm. how to um, manufacture. If you take a, a polymer, and or a um, moth or so, and try to mix them together. Mm. It's a lot of, of tricks, a lot of mm. uh, a knowledge that you need and to make it in a real membrane. And once you have it, also to characterize in the sense of uh, morphological characterization yeah. of the performance itself, mm. you know, and, and, and to bring this membrane in a, uh, into a process. To, mm -hmm. You need the module, you need uh, sure. to build a device, a, a testing device, or, or a later on the pilot plant or whatever. Mm, sure, sure. So as one of the advisory board members mm -hmm. for the Barrett Center, you mentioned that there's a new project starting in collaboration with us yeah. for, um, what was it that you Organic resistant uh, non-infiltration. Mm. Uh, do you foresee more projects in the future, more collaboration? Yeah, you? I hope so. I think I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that's yeah, good to see. And how has your experience at the Barrett Center been so far? Uh, oh, and your stay with us this week? Oh, it's, it's, it's excellent. I think it's a very, very nice opportunity. I, I know um, uh, Andrew, I know um, Kang Lee for, for very long, mm -hmm. and, and, but to have the opportunity to work together in, in, and also to be, to advise and, and, and discuss in, as part of the center, I think it's, it's a very good opportunity for me too, and I hope I can contribute to some really? ideas. Definitely. Well, thank you, President Espinosa. Thank you very much. It's been a wonderful talking to you. So that's all we have time for in our interview today. Uh, we thank again President Espinosa for joining us. Um, if you'd like to watch this interview and all the creative content that we uh, can conduct here in the Barra Center, please do check out all our social media channels and the Barra Center website. All of the details are on your screen. Um, we'll make sure that we promote all of the research work that we're conducting here at the Center and with our partners such as Cal University as well. Uh, with that, we we'll thank Professor Nunes again, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.